we finally have it. The first benchmark for AMD's monster Ryzen Max APU, as well as confirmed specs. But before I get to that, AMD just met a wild goal. Path tracing is here, and ARM is working on their own gaming GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, back in 2021, AMD set a pretty ambitious goal. The company claimed that they would deliver a 30x increase in energy efficiency for AMD processors and accelerators powering servers for AI training and HPC from 2020 to 2025. Well, in a new announcement, it looks like AMD has nearly met that goal a year early. As you can see right down here, it says, that they were able to achieve a 28.3x energy efficiency improvement in 2024 using the AMD Instinct MI300X accelerators paired with AMD EPIC 9575F host CPUs. And that is compared to the 2020 goal baseline. You can see it right here. And obviously this was already a very ambitious goal, but in fact, from early on, pretty much all the way until now, they have beat that goal. And you can see that as of 2024, they are very, very close to it. Now, I will go ahead and mention that they did state that this isn't just a hardware change. You can see it says through a combination of architectural advancements and software optimizations, they were able to achieve this. But still, we're literally talking 28.3 times the energy efficiency, I mean, that really is wild. With that said, I do want to point out that even though they go over a lot of the hardware that they actually used with this new test, they didn't really mention the hardware that was used for the 2020 baseline. Now, I would assume that it was just an Epic processor for that time, but I do at least want to mention this just because obviously when you make these big announcements, you should actually have or at least show what you were comparing it to so we know, okay, this is a fair comparison. So there obviously is a chance that the comparison isn't all that fair and this is really just marketing, but as long as that isn't the case, I mean, this really is seriously impressive. But first, if you like staying up to date on all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Meld and hit that bell icon. And next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that I've discussed the wild PC requirements for the Indiana Jones and the Great Circle game a couple times now, and just if you didn't see those, as a quick recap, if you're wanting to use full ray tracing, which is basically path tracing, if you want to use that at 4K, you're literally going to need an RTX 4090. Now that part isn't too much of a surprise, but you're going to need it while using frame generation and super resolution with the performance preset. So not even DLSS with a balanced or quality preset. No, it has to be performance. And that is just to get a target FPS of 60. Well, like I said, then the full ray tracing wasn't actually out even when the game originally was released, but like I'd also said, it was going to be out in just a couple days. Well, it has officially been released and Nvidia is already talking about it. And in fact, they actually showed some comparison screenshots with full ray tracing on versus full ray tracing off. And the reason why they say full ray tracing is because even when it's off, this game still utilizes ray tracing at least a bit. But regardless, let's kind of go over some of these as you can see right here. So we have obviously within the windows, you can see coming through the pane, there's quite a bit more light. You can actually see it's, I will say this one does look really nice the way it illuminates everything. And it doesn't just change the objects that the light is actually hitting it. It actually changes the environment altogether. You can see on the wall, the colors are different here. It, it really just kind of changes everything and it does look nice though the difference isn't completely massive well in this case it is pretty stark but the only problem that i have with this i guess i'll kind of go ahead and get into it is that while it is a fairly big difference if you're just playing in the game and you're just running around and i'll kind of get to some more images this one i actually think is one of the best looking representations of full ray tracing when it's turned on but even then it isn't such a big difference that I ultimately think, at least in most 
cases that it's worth the massive hit in performance that you get and just how much hardware it requires. I'm really talking just in most scenarios. Some people will give an example like when you're holding a torch and the way it illuminates and you can kind of put it down a certain way to solve the puzzle that really is cool and obviously adds to what you get out of full ray tracing but when we're just purely talking the graphics in general it's it just doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference at least if you ask me with that said you can see here this once again a little bit more of a subtle difference you can see the light coming in between the trees you can see how it kind of illuminates this much better than it does over here i mean we are talking differences but they're sort of subtle given how much kind of requirements you need for this game. And then we have this one right here. And this one I've noticed it looks really interesting because for one, you have the light way more illuminating the bricks right here. You almost can't even see them because they're washed out from the light. And then really the biggest, kind of the coolest thing that I see is the effect in the water. There's a lot of times, obviously, when you're looking at like a puddle of water and it's hard to tell is that actually water or what is that reflecting thing it just kind of blends in a lot of times and it does that blending in significantly better with full ray tracing on versus here you can actually kind of see where the water begins and where it ends while over here it perfectly blends in with the ground the last one right here and this one at least if you ask me is really the least impressive one you can see in the shadows they are quite a bit blurrier they obviously look more realistic but without this side by side it, it just really isn't gonna be something you're gonna massively notice it's not like it makes it a completely different game yet the requirements are as if it was a next generation versus current gen game. And what's wild is that the requirements were already really high. And then when you add on full ray tracing, the requirements go completely astronomical. Obviously, this is pure opinion. And with that, I'll ask, what do you think? Do you think the full ray tracing mode is like this giant difference? I mean, it certainly looks really good in some areas and in other areas, it's not all that great or not all that much better but just let me know what you think down in the comments below and next up for today oh man new chips new competitor this is going to be fantastic at least if you ask me as you can see right here this story claims that arm is actually developing their own gpus in israel now this story itself is actually a little old at this point but the reason why i brought it up is actually because there was a new video by moore's law is dead where daniel nini i really am sorry if i pronounced this wrong but either way this is someone who's been in the industry for decades at this point and he actually said just recently that this is real, or at the very least, that ARM is in fact working to make their own chips. Not just they make the technology and everything, but then other chip makers come in and actually utilize it, and then they basically pay ARM for those rights, for the licensing of it. So this is a huge deal on two fronts. For one, that ARM themselves are potentially really developing these GPUs, but then also not only that, but they're gaming GPUs. As you can see right here, it says UK chip giant ARM is developing a graphics processor unit in Israel that will compete with Nvidia and Intel. No clue why they didn't mention AMD here, but regardless, Nvidia and Intel sources familiar with the matter have told Globes. Now, you might think given all the hype with AI, that's obviously where they're going to steer this, but in fact, at least to begin with, that is not the case. It says ARM is estimated to be employing about 100 chip and software development engineers in its global graphics processing group at its development center in, there's no way I'm going to be able to pronounce that right, but here's the big one right here at this stage. ARM is reportedly engaged in graphics processing for the video game market. That's right. We are talking a potential new competitor here in this space. And like I've said multiple times, competition is great, especially when we're talking this market where you can buy, you know, even though it is top of the line, but still top of the line gaming GPU for over 1500 bucks, then potentially 2000 to 2500 with the RTX 5090.
And lastly for today, we finally have the first benchmark and obvious subsequent proof that AMD's Strix Halo APUs are in fact a thing. Of course, given all the leaks that we've seen on it, some of the information that I've even heard, I was already extremely confident that it was a thing, but we're now actually seeing it and we have, well, like I said, a benchmark. As you can see right down here, this story originally comes from Geekbench and we have a Vulcan score, but I'll get to that in just a second. But you can also see this also confirms that it is in fact called Ryzen Max, Ryzen AI Max Plus. I mean, we'll just call it Ryzen Max for now. This one is, of course, the plus variant. And not only that, but the integrated GPU, which don't forget that. The reason these are such a big deal is because they come with an absolute monster of an iGPU and they're calling it the Radeon 8060S. And don't forget that this bad boy is set to come with 40 CUs, but it doesn't stop there because at least according to this, it actually comes with 32 megabytes of L3 cache per CCD for a total of 64 megabytes. For reference, the regular Strix Halo, the highest end model, only comes with 24 megabytes of L3 cache. So a massive amount more here. And obviously it's gonna be really impressive in other ways as well. Don't forget that the Max Plus version, it's called the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, comes with 16 Zen 5 cores and 40 RDNA 3.5 compute units. Not only that, but during this test the apu actually will like i said this confirms 16s and 5 cores but it actually boosted all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz and that may not sound all that impressive but don't forget that this is on a mobile platform with that said the score really wasn't all that impressive but keep in mind that this is likely still an early engineering sample with that said, that score, if we compare it to other ones, you can see that it scored 67,004 points in the Vulcan test. And believe it or not, that's actually lower than the RX 7600. That one scored 90,577. So a pretty stark difference here. And as they state, despite the fact that it comes with more CUs, that 7600 only comes with 32 CUs, while, like I said, this bad boy comes with 40. Once again, keep in mind that this is likely an early engineering sample. And obviously when we're talking, especially gaming performance and things like that, the software is incredibly important there, but there is also another potential thing holding it back. And as you can see, they state the Radeon 8060S is still limited by its form factor as well as the TDP. And obviously there's likely gonna be some notebooks with higher TDP, some with lower. Maybe this is one of the lower ones. That could also be a really big reason, but still don't forget that this bad boy is an APU. So this is everything combined into one. So even then getting 67,000 is completely wild. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's Ryzen Max? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.